Now, I am joined, like you said, by some very special guests. So, for our next segment, we are going to be talking about the Positive People Project. Now, with the government furlough scheme coming to an end soon, it's expected that more than 150,000 people could find themselves without employment. If you're currently out of work and exploring new career options, our Positive People team are on hand to help, to help you and offer fully funded support and guidance. And to remind us what is on offer, I'd like to welcome, we've got Lindsay and Louise from the Chaos team. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Now, I wanted to start off whether, Louise, if you could kick things <laughs> off <laughs> and just tell our viewers about the Positive People Project and who is eligible. So Positive People is funded by the, the big lottery um, and it, anybody that is unemployed um, is eligible, eligible, can't say that word. It's a big word. To, <laughs> to sign up to the programme. So it's for, it's for if you're just looking for that next step, if you're unsure which direction you want to be going in, if you, um, if you, you want to get into work or training, but you, you need to do a little bit of work on yourself and your mental health first, we can, we can help you with all of that and just give you that step-by-step -step support. Um, to get you moving forward and taking those small steps to move you further along. Lovely. And obviously the project has been running for a few years now with great success, which is always good. Um, Lindsay, can you tell us about some of the ways that you've helped previous participants? Oh, gosh. <laughs> we can help people in a variety of ways. And I think we have done all sorts. We're very much, we've quite a creative team. We'll think outside the box. So. We get a participant and we're very person-centred and we listen to what they're wanting to achieve. So we've helped people, so some people are quite far away from work and they might not have any confidence. And I think there's been an increase in that since the pandemic of COVID. So we've experienced a lot of people wanting support in around mental well-being, building self-confidence, self-esteem, that kind of stuff. And then they kind of get to do that and then all of a sudden it opens quite a lot of stuff for them because they've found this new confidence. They start thinking actually I am worth you know training in something or I, I have got stuff to give you know back to the community and things like that so we can help with um, any training basically so obviously with pandemic we've done a lot of online training haven't we? We've become experts at what is out there online um, we've helped people with uh, CV writing, we've helped people with interview skills, we've um, anything really, nothing, any barrier that someone might have, we will find a way of breaking that down. So Amazing. it's um, every person's different to what, what they need. Sometimes it's just having somebody there to talk to you and just to guide you to move that next step forward, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I think that's why we're called Change Coaches, because we are there, we're not there to do the work for them, we're there to guide them, we're there to coach them, we're there to mentor them, um, and signpost, uh, we signpost quite a lot, so we've got a wealth of knowledge, our team is very diverse, so we've got a wealth of knowledge, so you know we can yeah. tackle anything really. Lovely. And as you said, as you are change coaches, um, what can people expect, Louise, when they sign up to the programme? So what people can expect is it depends on what they want. So like Lindsay said, we're very person centred. Um, so it depends on that individual, what their end goal is. And it's about just unpicking everything that needs to happen for that person to get them there and to take. And it, sometimes it can be baby steps and it's about setting targets and reaching that target and then moving on to the next target and and getting them to their end goal so what people should expect is really down to them um we we, we are the change coaches but we are guided by them and we're just supporting them to make those changes and i think to add to that we're, we're a very we're a team of women and we're very real and we're very empathic uh, yeah that's the word empathetic <laughs> <laughs> That as well, um, yeah. So we, you know, so, so they get, we care about our people that we work with. Supporting, isn't it? Just yeah, and we we love seeing people progress progress forward. Like you can, amazing what you, what you see. And sometimes I wish I could video it from the day that you meet them to when they exit the program. It's just like it makes why we do this job really worthwhile, really. And 
I, I know you mentioned a minute ago about everyone faces different barriers as to why they may be struggling to get into work. Mm -hmm. Obviously, barriers could be anything from mental health to disability to mm -hmm. anything. What would you say, if, are there any ways in which the Positive People Project can help, you know, or surprise people? Um, sort of... So we, have, you, have you had any sort of... What barrier is the most common, should I say, then, like, that you find people... I think for me it's a lot about around mental health at the moment. Yeah. It is around mental health, would you mm. say, Lou? Yeah. yeah. And finances, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people not having a stable accommodation at the moment, like that's like a hot topic right. at the minute. Like in Cornwall at the moment, it's really difficult if people are getting evicted and they need to have a stable accommodation to be able to, to, be able to move forward. Um, and obviously the pandemic has been yeah, a massive... Yeah, and the climate we're in at the moment yeah. with that, you know, it's pushing a lot of local people out in some ways. Um, so that's, that's adding to stress as well, isn't yeah, it? It's just a build-up. Yeah, yeah, finance, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not an easy time no. at the moment, no. really. And Louise, do you have, like, a favourite provision or pathway that people can explore or a memorable case that you want to share with us? Mm. It's really spot. putting you on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have a favourite provision. I think all of them um, that we refer to have their own unique... And they're all amazing. They're all unique in their own, in their own ways. Um, the two that stand out the most for me personally um, is obviously Chaos Farm. I love Chaos Farm. I think it's just amazing what they do. And I think that the people that go on it, again, all different, but you see them on the first day and then you see them two months later and and, and quite often they're like different people. Wow. Um, which is really, really reward, rewarding for us to see, <clears throat> as, as well as for, and that people gain friendships, they gain skills, they get used to being outside and, and integrating in, in so, socially as well. And I just think it's amazing. All the animal, everything about it. I love it. <laughs> Big up the farm. Big up the we farm. Love the farm. <laughs> and I think the other one that is my personal favourite is probably Chaos Cares, just because there's care is care is a sector that I personally am very passionate about, mm -hmm. and for people to have that support to get into that sector. Um, and breaking down those barriers to enable them to care for people and to give back in their local yeah. community, I think is amazing. Um, and a favourite, I think, I worked with a participant and at the start, he really struggled to have a conversation um, because obviously because of the pandemic, a lot of our work is done over the telephone and it used to take us a long time to get a conversation going because his confidence was so low, right. he couldn't he couldn't communicate properly, yeah. um, and he went to the farm, and now I don't recognise the person I speak to on the phone. Wow. He's so fluent, and we can understand each other really clearly. And he, he has goals that he wants. He 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 can see life after the farm now, and he knows what he wants to do. Which to me is what 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 we're for and that's what, what the project's it, about, about isn't it? yeah which is really really amazing amazing for him amazing for us because we can see him develop yeah and him setting those goals which three or four months ago we didn't we didn't have that so nice that you get to see that progress and you mm. get to see the whole following that journey through yeah. his course as well and i think the love one of the lovely things about positive people is once you because everything is done virtually and if you're involved in multiple organisations, people are just a voices down the phone, and it can be quite hard for people to put a name to a face. And but when you come to positive people, because you're assigned that change coach, it's it's one to one all the time, and it and it's a constant from start to finish. Right. So it gives people that continuity as well, which I think it's important. Is really it? important. Yeah, it's great that there's so many different provisions within chaos. Mm. I know chaos as a whole are passionate and they're on this mission to support people mm. into employment. Would you say there's any areas or communities um, that you want to hear from or reach out to? Um, so I think one of our targets um, is to get more females involved in our project. Um, 
chapter it is about empowering women so we've just done a pilot scheme with some young mums and you know when we first met them you know they were quite far away and then now they finish the program it's like they've got all these skills they, they're learning that actually you can be a mum and still have a career um i think that's quite a powerful message that we did there um so yeah i think it we need to target more females being involved i um, mean obviously we work with anybody um and the the partnership in it as a whole are looking to want to get involved with people um from the lgbtq <laughs> community um which i know um matthew who works with chaos with Kelmore pride yeah is you know he's really campaigning a lot for that and we must have got rid of about 800 leaflets when they did the tour, tour wow. um, on the, um, the, bride the bus, bus pride bus, yeah. yeah. And then they've got another event at the end of the, the month, um, which I think will we'll have a, some presence there, I believe. So, Great. yeah, yeah. So Lovely. I think they're the main ones at the moment. I can't. To be, I just want to work with everybody. It's all about being <laughs> inclusive and getting everybody yeah. involved. So. Yeah. We'll work with anybody. Amazing. And we touched briefly on, on the care side of things um, a minute ago. I know you guys offer specialist support for people who are looking to explore health and social care in general. Mm. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how Chaos can help in that sector? So, yeah, we have, um, so at, at under Chaos, we have a, a domiciliary care agency. Um, so in the background, we have a lot of knowledge in health and social care, which is helpful. Um, <clears throat> so Chaos Cares can look at um, training that will, you know, give you that bit of knowledge. So and so any training in the health and care sector, so your safeguardings, your manual handlings, your infection control, which is obviously really, really important at the moment. Yeah. Um, they can look at uh, CV writing with you to um, work experience, um, volunteer placements. Um, which obviously throughout the pandemic, care homes with with you know the numbers in Cornwall going up, care yeah. homes have been struggling with staff isolation and everything. Can we have helped with that by people volunteering in that setting? It gives it gives the care home a you know help and it gives the participants that experience that they need, mm. um, which is is invaluable at the moment. It's about again, it's about giving back, empowering people. Actually, you can do it. You've done it. Yeah. You've, you've worked in a pandemic. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, um, they can look for work placements for you, volunteer work, looking at the local job market, and it's about communicating with all the other care agencies and it's about bringing them together and everybody working as a team because we're all out there doing the same job mm. exactly. and it shouldn't be us versus you it's about bringing us together as a community and working together to get the be best outcome for the people that are involved yeah and, and like you said sometimes it's just about a confidence as well getting mm. that push um, mm. you mentioned about retraining mm. um, and again it can be quite daunting going, mm. going back in, into work if you've been out of it so it's great you said you offered a bit of retraining. Mm -hmm. um, can you expand on that a little bit more as to what you do offer? Well, yeah, we offer anything really. So, for example, this morning I spoke to one lady and she was a dental nurse before the pandemic, but then got made redundant when the pandemic hit. Um, she's been out of work for like over 12 months. She doesn't want to go back into that career. She's like, I'm done with that. I want to go into something completely different. Now, she completely spoke a different language to me because I've never heard of it, but computer design aid or something it is, and it's not an architect, but it's kind of similar where you can learn to do design and planning and you can charge at a cheaper rate. And what she's found is she had a friend that did it but and they were really busy, but they've moved up to Scotland, so there's, there's a gap in the market. So she has found a course, like she's very able, she's found the course that she wants to do She's given me the link. I'm like, thank God you've done your research because I've got no idea. Like I'm learning as well. Um, and yeah, she's completely, completely changed. She wasn't. That's not what I was expecting her to do. So um, you know, she's tapped in that her partner's a builder, so she it can go hand in hand with that. Uh, she can be wants to be self-employed, so it fits in around her three children and her work-life balance. And I think we've found a lot of that in the pandemic. People. There's been a massive rise in self-employment because people have been able to work from home behind you yeah. know, so they've been to do everything online and 
um yeah so anything really like that. we um people know the co um Kerno weather team here um i've supported them to get the qualifications in in that area as well and Great. yeah it just depends what people's barriers are yeah. if people know what they yes. want to do and what we do is just support them to break down that barrier and just yeah. putting things in place for them to enable them to do it just exploring what options there yeah. are really isn't yeah. it yeah. and obviously positivity is a big thing here at chaos <laughs> we, all, we all like a bit of positivity have you guys got any top tips <laughs> For positivity. And we'll keep, them, we'll oh, keep yeah. them clean. What have you, what uh, have you got for me? <laughs> Lou is the positivity queen. So I get on people's nerves sometimes. Um, I, think, I think everybody's entitled to have a bad day. And I think it's actually okay to have a bad day. And you wouldn't be normal if you didn't. Um, I think my, my thing is, is, there's always going to be somebody else worse off than you. And actually, I feel that everything happens for a reason. And you might be going through a really crappy time at the minute, but all that's going to do is teach you lessons for the, your next mm. experience and your next journey. Um, so I always twist everything to be a positive because in every negative comes a positive. Yeah. And it's just about having the mindset to search for it a little bit, I think. I think it's changing your language as well with it. You know, we, we talk in a very positive way, obviously, because we're positive people. <laughs> um, it's in the name, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and I, yeah, and as a team, we are very positive. We are positive, we are. You know, we believe in people. And I think a lot of that is if people don't believe in themselves, you know, it's really difficult. But people find, we get lots of feedback saying, thank you for listening, you know, being kind to us. And it's, yeah, so I think because we give a positive outlook, mm. it kind of rubs off a little bit. Mm. And we get the, when somebody progresses, we get a lot of thanks from them. When actually it's about turning oh. that round because actually we haven't done it. You've done all the hard work. All we've done is support yeah. what you want. Um, so it's about taking ownership of when you've done well, giving yourself that little tap on the, tap yeah. on the shoulder. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you a pat on the back as well. It's a joint effort, isn't it? So what would you guys say makes the Positive People Project different to other programmes that are out there? Well, you've got an amazing team of women. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Exactly. <laughs> I think, for me, I haven't worked on any other programme that's similar to this. But I know for pos from my time at Positive, Pe Positive People, we are very person-centred and... Mm. I think that's really, really important because what's what's good for one isn't good for another. Yeah. Everybody has different needs and different views, and it's about being being non-judgmental yeah. and being open, isn't and it? And being open, and actually, it's not about what I want you to do. It's about what yeah. you want to do and what course you want to do. And the amount of conversations I have, um, and s someone might say, "I want to do so and so course." but they haven't looked for a course. And I said, well, there's no point in me looking for a course because I could pluck a course out of the air, but it's got yeah. to be right for you. Um, so I think the person-centered, we're, we're, we're non, definitely non-judgmental and we see people from all walks of life. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think the beauty of us as well, it's like if one route doesn't work, we'll look for another route. So you'll often hear me talk about a scenic route. You know, we <laughs> like to go on a scenic journey, you know. We don't always get to the, the, the goal straight away. We, we might have to take a few little roads and we get on a roundabout, we'll try one <laughs> exit. And if that doesn't work, we'll go on the next exit. It's a marathon, not we, a sprint, yeah, is what we, we're saying. So yeah. we're very much like that. We won't give up. We definitely hit roadworks, but we will wait <laughs> yeah. for those traffic lights to change. When we're in Cornwall, you're going <laughs> yeah. to be, gonna be yeah. stuck behind a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> that's on. right that's it and just the last thing the most important thing is how can people get in contact and and get involved you know where can they find your information <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the obviously on the chaos website um the positive, positive people, people have oh, yeah. um web the the facebook pages i believe we're on instagram as well you can get linked in through um your social prescriber or your family worker um 
everywhere. Everywhere, really. Yeah. Really, yeah. 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 Everything's um, online. Everything's, everything's online. Yeah, you, yeah, you type chaos positive people. Well, I'm sure we'll come up. We'll pop up on Facebook there. or Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you guys so much for for joining me today. Thank you for having us. If any of you watching have missed any of those details, of course, you can visit our website, which is Chaos Group cornwall.co.uk or get in touch with us here at chaos tv